Hello everyone, my name is Dennis Dyack and I'm a director of a project called Eternal Darkness coming out uh, for the Nintendo GameCube. Uh, Eternal Darkness is uh, a psychological thriller. It's the type of game that people may quickly look at and think it's a survival horror. It's, it's the opposite of that. Uh, we've based it on uh, what I would consider classical uh, horror stories, not your typical B horror stories. There's no virus, there's no uh, undead running around. We've got an ancient evil trying to come into the world and try to influence humanity over 2,000 years of history. We've taken historically accurate periods and modeled them uh, painstakingly with research data, with weapon data, and just trying to make it as realistic and portray the period as uh, best as possible. So we're, we're in uh, France uh, during the time of the Inquisition. We're, we go all throughout Europe, we go out through parts of uh, Asia, we're in parts of North America in the 1700s. So we've done all that, and then what we've done is put this fantastical spin on it is, what if there is these creatures trying to come back into our world and influencing mankind? So from that perspective on the story, uh, it's very, very different. Uh, from a gameplay perspective, we encourage the players to explore the environment. We have a complicated, uh, not complicated, a detailed magical system where players can actually summon creatures and cast magic and do a lot of things uh, to explore the environment. We have a system where the players can go insane as they play. And during, during that uh, system, uh, players will hallucinate, things will happen that they're not sure is real or not, and we found through focus testing that uh, they really enjoy going insane and, and they're kind of questioning the game after a while, which is very interesting. Uh, we also have uh, a fairly stable uh, base for combat uh, that we've been working out for a long time and uh, working, uh, trying to get the gameplay as best as possible. So with the, all these things combined, uh, you'll find with Eternal Darkness, you're not really running from the enemies, you're trying to figure out how to get through the level and how best to take advantage of the situation and get, get through and, and explore the environments. Uh, whereas uh, typical survival horrors, you're out of ammo and you're running through the level just trying to survive. That's not what we're doing here. We're trying to tell a story uh, and we're really trying to merge the elements of uh, music, art, uh, technology, uh, storyline and gameplay all into one uh, cohesive whole where the sum of the, uh, where the, where, where the whole itself is greater than the sum of its parts. So that's, that's how I think, uh, that's what I think Eternal Darkness is, and that's how I think it stands out as a game, and how it's definitely not uh, uh, anything else but a psychological thriller. Another system uh, which uh, is very interesting is the Sanity System. And with the Sanity System, uh, we, this is really a chance for us to sort of experiment, and uh, depending on the level of sanity for the player, uh, he'll start to hallucinate, or not necessarily hallucinate, just start to do things that he wouldn't rationally do. And there we found, uh, through a lot of focus testing, that a lot of people started questioning the game, started realizing that, uh, hey, is this really happening or not? And it was very interesting and very fun, we found. We found some people actually wanted to go insane. And to counter that sanity part, we've uh, introduced a, a very detailed magical system that uh, sort of, uh, we hope, counters the hallucinations in the, in the sanity. And with this magic system, we actually have ruins that the player can collect throughout the game. And they're, they're structured very much, uh, or the, the, sanity, uh, the magic system is built very much like a language system. So by putting together these different ruins and different combinations, the player can actually cast different magical spells. And uh, through exploration, they'll be able to summon creatures, run around as different monsters. They'll be able to enchant their weapons, create shields, uh, block off an area with a, a damage barrier. They'll be able to do and explore the area, do magical attacks and wipe out all the monsters or creatures in the room if they have enough magic. So uh, really, uh, we're trying to uh, really emphasize how much can the players explore and have fun with this game, because that's what we want them to do. We want them to look around and have fun and just enjoy it. We don't want them running through the level worrying about, I can't kill this monster. We want them to sort of take advantage of the system and say go. And then with uh, all the other systems, with the combat system, with the sanity system, the player can sort of balance how he wants the game to go. And also, when you play one of the different alignments, you're going to find that these things balance out very differently. So one, one game you might find that, oh, these monsters are really, really difficult to fight. Another one is just like, wow, I never have any sanity. This is, I got to get my sanity back. Got to do anything I can to get my sanity back. So those are the kind of things that we, uh, we sort of emphasize throughout the game. The Nintendo GameCube, uh, from a technology standpoint, is uh, really a dream come true. Uh, it's very easy to develop for, uh, and the technology is, is very, very good. 
Uh, you'll find that other uh, first parties may talk about technology, uh, but however, the Nintendo family in general, we tend not to focus on that that much, simply because we're more interested in the gameplay and the game being fun. So regardless of the technology, which I think is great for the GameCube, what's really more important is what can we get out of this to make it fun for the players. So uh, currently, as an example for technology, we're pushing a lot of the polygons. We're maintaining 60 frames per second, completely real-time environment. We have a volumetric rolling fog. Uh, we have, uh, I think, up to 16 different texture layers running at once. Uh, bump mapping, mip mapping, you know, reflections. We, we have it all we need, but really, all that is all secondary to making a great game. So we, we tend not to talk about it too much. Um, and what we'd rather say is, if the other, if the other uh, first parties are going to talk about their hardware, we're going to concentrate on the wetware, and we're going we're gonna to use our heads to, to really concentrate and explore what's going to make it best to make it the best game and the most fun game possible for the players. Eternal Darkness uh, clearly, I think, is a first, uh, first indicator, or not a first, but uh, another continued indicator that Nintendo is not uh, focusing on uh, uh, a younger market, we're focusing on games for everyone. And uh, really, uh, Nintendo is, is really pushing towards creating new and original content. And uh, Eternal Darkness is mature uh, because of the content itself, not because it's overly violent. We strongly believe that uh, uh, if there's going to be violence, it's gonna be, uh, there's going to be a reason for the violence. And if you look at movies like, like Private Ryan, a very violent movie, but a movie that should have been made, and everyone who left the theater after watching Private Ryan Basically, especially, uh, especially people who've never experienced war come out of there and saying, I never want to be in a war. And so it's responsible, uh, responsible creativity. So everything here in Eternal Darkness is responsible. Uh, we're not doing things for violence sake. We're doing things to create a message and saying, hey, look at all this. Look at all the pain and sacrifice you have to go through if you're going to face these kind of odds. And that's really what's special about humanity is the ability for us to overcome uh, really uh, uh, diverse and uh, uh, just very difficult situations. So um, I think uh, how is it a Nintendo game which is even more special in my opinion is the gameplay really comes through. The basic uh, uh, the focus of making sure the game is fun rules above all else and then we've got this unique content that's coming to the player like they've never seen before and uh, some some content they, where they may uh, look for some mature uh, cerebral type, uh, thinking, I think people are going to find out that, wow, this is not your typical uh, beeline movie plot. This is really something that we're trying to do and trying to make people think as well as enjoy. All the things that we modeled, uh, all the weapons as an example, are historically accurate. We try to have authentic weapons. Uh, uh, we try to do everything uh, based on that time period uh, as best we can. So if we're going to do, at one point we have a, a small cathedral uh, at a certain time period before there was stained glass. So we make sure since stained glass wasn't invented, there's no stained glass windows. And then the next time you revisit that place, you come back and stained glass was very, very popular in Europe, and then boom, everything's got stained glass. So there's things like that that we think people will pick up on, the sort of history aficionados. If, if they're really interested in that kind of thing, then certainly uh, it'll be there for them to uh, look into and explore and have fun with. Eternal Darkness is a very different kind of game, and it's uh, not, not a typical uh, game uh, that comes out. It's, it's a very large game, and the best uh, way I can describe it is it's like three director's cuts uh, in one. So uh, depending on what the player does, many games will have different endings, but what we've done with Eternal Darkness is actually given you three different stories. So if you, uh, depending on what your choice is at the very beginning of the game with the Pius Augustus uh, at uh, 28 BC or 26 BC, um, your story will change as you go through it. It'll, it'll scope out and then eventually come to a conclusion that, uh, that will be very different depending on what choice you make at the very beginning. And uh, there's three different choices and uh, all of them play differently, feel differently. It all comes down to uh, making the game seem different and making a different experience for the player. For the, so those people who uh, really love the game and want to play it more than once, uh, if they play through the different uh, uh, alignments, they'll find that it is a different experience and, and that they'll see creatures they haven't seen before and they'll see parts of the story they haven't seen before or they'll look at it and they'll understand that part of the story quite differently than what they thought it was. And um, it, it should offer a very unique experience on something that we haven't seen before. So we're pretty excited about that.